Hey guys, we want to take a moment and go over some new products that we have here in-house. We have Brett with us who's going to go over some of the technical data on it. So without further ado, Brett LaSala. Yeah, so we're here today at RealStreet because they're going to be a new product vendor for Rife sensors. Basically, they're going to carry our complete Rife sensor line. If you're not familiar with the product, you can uh, check out RealStreet's website or our website. We we'll basically have uh, sensors from screw-in pressure sensors to sensor blocks, IAT sensors, fluid temp sensors, shock travel sensors, the whole lineup to make a race car race very well, have repeatable, accurate, and faster data. Um, along with this relationship is going to be the launch of our new DTM series screw-in pressure sensor. Uh, so this is basically the same sensor technology that is used in the current blocks and the screw-in pressure sensors, except utilizing a three-way DTM connection at the top. The electrical connection at any sensor is always the weak link. Uh, the old Delphi standard connections type is prone to water intrusion, corrosion, vibration issues, the pins are small. Uh, DTM is a motorsports-inspired uh, factory-level uh, connection that is fully serviceable and sealed to a much higher rating than the Delphi connector. So if you're building your car from scratch, you can start building your looms with these. If you have a standard Delphi connection now, you can cut that off, crimp on a uh, DTM connector, and then move into the sensor line for just uh, basically uh, the life and repeatability of your sensor, knowing that you're not going to have a failure. Not only the serviceability and the wiring is an upgraded se uh, section with these sensors, but what's another talking point that you like to talk about when it comes to the life of these? I think you were talking about the internal design has a, a better reliability aspect of it. Do you want to touch on that? Yeah, so basically a screw and pressure sensor um, is prone to a lot more vibration than you say a sensor block because it's going to be directed directly onto an engine or onto a wastegate or something that that's, has a lot of vibration. The sensor element uh, is encased in the body where um, a typical other brand maybe that's uh, firmly mounted in there. Our sensor is floating on an O-ring and then is epoxy potted on top of that. So it has a level of vibration uh, resistance built into the sensor for, for the lifespan of the sensor and for more accurate data because when the sensor is vibrating, the, the element may be moving and you can probably see that in your trace depending on how, how well or how close you're looking at your tune-up. Oh, so another reason why to upgrade to something like this. Uh, so that covers some of the new products that we have here on the table. These other blocks that we have in front of us, how configurable are they to somebody's application? Uh, so the blocks are basically fully custom configurable. We, uh, we offer them from a single sensor, uh, which will utilize three temperature or other five volt inputs on the side, all the way to a quad sensor block. That's not here, you see it. We'll have four individual sensors. You can output these sensors with any size that you need. So basically from 60 to 1600 PSI, or from one bar to 10 bar of map sensor. You can also get these in a, a standard eighth inch NPT inlet or a dash three that's built right onto the sensor. So your leash, if it's going to vacuum, you want to use a rubber hose or a push lock line, um, you can configure them however you want. Um, and then the beauty of the sensor block is now you're mounting this out of the direct heat or vibration of your engine. It can be on your firewall, depending on how your wiring's laid out. You have one wire connection feeding this, and it's, a, it's another Deutsch connector. It's a DT6, so it's a you know, very high-level connector. It's not going to fail. Sensors out of the way. Um, if you need to service your engine, you basically just disconnect the line or the hose that's going to the sensor. You never have to actually remove the sensor from the car unless you're doing something more involved. For, for your general servicing, you know, now you take a charge pipe off, you, you unscrew your map sensor, and you throw it in your bolt bin. You know, you're just you're just leading a sensor's uh, death, uh, I should say, eventually. You know, so with, with this system, it's out of the way. It's a clean look, but it also has a lot of function because now the sensor element also is the same as this one where it floats on an O-ring in there, but then now that pod slides into the case. So it has like a third level of protection from vibration and heat. That's pretty fantastic. Yeah. Uh, one of our favorite things of now carrying these, not only have we seen these products work relentlessly on race programs like Brett LaSalle's themselves, but we actually also use Rife sensors in our engine dyno program here in house. So being able to provide you, the customer, either domestically or internationally with a product that we fully trust in is something that we always love to deliver. And we're going to be coming back to do some sensor testing on your engine dyno. We're mm -hmm. going to do uh, data analysis and compare different sensor types and uh, IAT sensors to pressure sensors um, just to get more information out and more information for us, uh, for everyone to learn. <laughs> While we do stock all of these Rife sensors here in-house, if you're interested in some of the other Motion products, you can reach out to us and one of our build advisors would be happy to help you out with that as well. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section below and we'll see you on the next video.